Now on point tonight. A small percentage of Americans believe in the total outlawing of abortion without any exception. A small percentage of Americans believe in abortion on demand up until the time of birth. Since you are watching us tonight and not one of the more partisan cable networks, neither of those statements likely describe your views. You are the silent majority, and politicians on both sides of the aisle continually ignore you, your opinions, and your desires. Quite simply, you don't matter to them. This isn't good for the country, and the results are predictable. We are likely to end up with half the country allowing abortion of full-term babies and the other half forcing rape victims into motherhood. Polling on abortion paints a confusing landscape and one that is ill-suited for hot takes on cable news. For example, 7 in 10 Americans, 70%, say the decision to have an abortion should be left up to the pregnant person and her doctor. Yes, I know the script says pregnant person and her doctor with a her, but we didn't write the poll. That's just what the poll question said. But when asked, do you think abortion should be legal after the first six weeks when the fetal heartbeat is detected, 44% say yes. After 14 weeks, 34% say yes. After 24 weeks, when a fetus can survive on its own, only 22% say yes. Polls like that demand nuanced policy. They demand our politicians compromise. America's current political system punishes both of those noble traits and ideals. Let's think about how the next few weeks will play out. The Democratic Senate will take a bill later this week guaranteeing abortion rights till childbirth, and it will fail. Here's Joe Scarborough this morning. My only question is, going back to, to Schumer, why don't you get a bipartisan vote? This is what Democrats, Democrats don't, don't understand. So you can't get 100% of what you want. You can't get 80% of what you want. Maybe get 60% of you what you want so you can say we have a bipartisan bill. Let's just say 60% is abortions till the 16th week of pregnancy, a time frame that polls quite well. Of course, Chuck Schumer can't do that. He can't offer that bill. The other MSNBC host will kill him for not going all the way, as evidenced here. I would like to find out who the leaker is so I could make sweet love to that person. And if the leaker, yeah. a lot of people are saying it could be a conservative, if the leaker is a Republican, uh, and if I get pregnant during our lovemaking, I will joyfully abort our fetus and let them know. <laughs> yeah. Remember, those are the people our elected representatives watch because they have to. Those are the people who their donors watch. So let's go back to our pragmatic bill at 16 weeks. Liberal Republicans know Fox News would never allow them to take a vote like that. Tate Reeves is a good example on the other side. He's the Republican governor of Mississippi and a favorite of the far right on CNN. Here he is this weekend. So just to be clear, you have no intention of seeking to ban IUDs or Plan B? Th that is not what we are focused on at this time. We're, we're focused on... Uh, looking at see what the court allows for uh, the the bill that is before the court is a 15-week ban. We we believe that that the overturning of Roe is the correct decision by the court. All right, so Reeves is so beholden to the far right, he can't say no to a ban on Plan B or a ban on IUDs. First off, my mother is watching. How awful that we are having to talk about this on cable news. But worse. This is where the debate is going. Love or hate Roe. Love or hate the Supreme Court decision that is likely coming. Roe provided a relatively moderate window for the abortion debate to take place in. That window is likely gone. Now, both sides have no choice but to take the most extreme positions. That's On Point tonight. George Will is with us tonight, Pulitzer Prize winning columnist, News Nation senior political contributor. Good to see you, sir. Uh, how is it that abortion, which affects in a way so few people at any one given time, so monopolizes the American political conversation? Well, as you su suggest, it's partly it's a mobilizer, it's a fundraiser, and the squeaky wheel in American politics gets the grease and the squeaks are coming from the far left and the far right. We put up uh, what was spray painted on the side of the building. Uh, they said that if abortions aren't safe, neither are you, 
Is there a way that the emotions in America get turned down uh, ahead of this summer on this issue? I think uh, we're going to be actually lucky because the leak ignited the controversy and the controversy can only burn for so long before it runs out of fuel. Everything to be said will be said before late June when at last in the Dobbs case, the Supreme Court officially speaks to the final opinion. So at the, in that sense, I think the slow letting off of steam, although it's unseemly and there's a grotesque amount of stupidity involved, uh, it, means that we have to have a little more peaceful summer because sooner or later the the voices of the calm will take over from those of the fanatics who will simply run out of extreme things to say. How do we deal with this issue of purity in politics now that is required to the point where uh, you go from uh, on one side Democrats uh, a year ago championing the idea of government telling you what to do with your bodies and now uh, you are in the words of Kirsten Gillibrand we're making half citizens out of women and on the other hand you've got Republicans who love the idea of parents uh, being able to control their kids education but uh, now want bills that are banning uh, what parents uh, medical care they can seek for their children how do, how do we square anything uh, from a, a reason standpoint uh, amidst the culture war there is no substitute, Leland, for leadership. No substitute for some few people in politics, men and women, to step forward and give voice to the people whose voices are not heard and are not articulated. Sooner or later it's going to happen because our political market works, Leland. Hmm. There will be a demand for this and the demand will produce a supply of temperate leaders. I'm just sure, the, I, I know it's unseemly and it's embarrassing to the nation to have these ludicrous things said left, right, but uh, they will run out of gas and the majority will still be there. No one's being convinced, no one's being converted by the fanatics on either wing of this argument. Well, and if, if the economic issues get uh, worse, then perhaps the, the need for leadership and the <laughs> market for it goes up. Uh, good to see you. Thank you. Glad to be with you. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.